Today I want to talk to you about love, passion, how you can create it for yourself and why you haven't. Maybe you're a player, right? And all of a sudden you're just like, oh, I want to keep getting more. Like you're in a buffet. You're just like, need more, need more, need more. Where, where does that come from? This, this urge and need to be with a million people rather than finding one person. Or maybe you really want one person, but you believe this is the way to get them. Now, what if you're a female and you really want someone, but you're closed off. You, you have a shell, right? This mask, like I don't want to get hurt. And it's understandable because you've been hurt before. So what is stopping someone from really finding love, from finding happiness, and how is it affecting you and your future? I run into so many people now that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s that are absolutely miserable in their relationships. Now, you're telling me that you're just going to settle for someone you're not happy with? Have a family with them. Kids, they're going to grow up, and you're going to wake up every day thinking, is this it? Is this it? And then you try to look for things in your life. You're going to have a midlife crisis. Oh my God, I'm unhappy with my career. I don't know what to do with myself. And you're going to fall into this pattern of depression and anxiety and stress and you're going to be defeated. And you'll be like, well, when I was young, it was so much better. I guess this is what's supposed to happen, right? Well, no, love is only at the beginning. That's the honeymoon phase, right? It's nonsense. And yes, I'm 23 years old. Yes, I have not gotten married yet. Yes, I haven't had a long-term relationship yet, but there is one thing I have done, and it's mastered psychology, relationships, hypnosis, and the understanding of patterns and compatibility. How do I create more compatibility with other individuals so they can not only find true love, but they can literally connect, bond, and maintain that relationship? Maybe you're in a relationship right now that's wrong for you, and you don't have the courage to leave. In this video, I'm going to outline how to find true love, how to create it in your current relationships, and how to walk away from one that is absolutely not going your way. There are so many times people stay with the wrong person, and because of that, they forfeit their chance for ever finding their soulmate, someone that they could truly connect with. My biggest passion in this world over anything, and I help people with so many different issues. I help people go to the next level financially, get as healthy as possible, you know, even create amazing relationships. But if there's one thing I'm extremely passionate about, and that's what I want to share with you today, it is how to create love for ourselves so you build real confidence and connection, real fulfillment in anything you do, and at the same time, how to teach others how to love. How can you love the people around you unconditionally, and how can you come from a place of such a strong foundation of self-love that you attract it for yourself? Remember, what you attract in life is how you see yourself. If you see yourself as a fat person, well, you're not gonna have a standard. You're gonna go eat like shit, you're gonna eat that pizza, you're gonna do all that stuff, you're not gonna get up, you're not gonna be active, you're not gonna go to the gym, and you're gonna continue to be fat because that's how you see yourself. If you see yourself as someone who's broke, as soon as you make a little bit of money, you'll get comfortable and you'll wait till you go broke again rather than continuing the motivation, continuing the growth. Similarly, in a relationship, if you see yourself as someone who doesn't deserve the best, who doesn't believe in love, who doesn't believe that you can create a true connection at the highest level, well, when people treat you poorly, you're gonna accept that, you're gonna stay that way. The same person that can treat someone horribly play games with you, waste your time, lead you on, disrespect you, be rude to you and abusive, can treat someone else like a queen or a prince. What changes between that? Well, it's your own self-love, your own self-value, your own self-image, your identity of how you should be treated. Someone who believes that they are really high value won't accept anything less. For instance, I'll go out with someone and sometimes they treat me poorly. They'll say something rude or they'll, they'll just be completely obnoxious and I'll cut it right there. I'm done. I will get up and I'll walk away. I don't have an obligation to stay because I'm in abundance. I want to show you what it's like to be in abundance, to understand people for where they're at, but don't feel obligated to fix them, correct them, stay with them, and really give you the courage to go find your true soulmate. So you can get up and leave a relationship that's not working, fix a relationship that's currently working, if it's not working because of you, how to repair it, build it up, and really create that connection and flame that you might have had at the beginning, or attract it in the first place. So stick around, you're gonna love this video, and at the end, I have a very special gift for you. So love is a catch-22, and what that really means is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
Ironically, what I found is that most people come full circle. You're born into this world, you don't really know any pain, you don't know heartbreak, you don't know what it's like to be rejected. You just are born <laughs> and you have this innocence about you. And I think that's one of the, the hardest things to witness, right? It's, it's to see innocence being taken away from someone unfairly. And each and every one of us almost mourns or misses the innocence that we lost. So what happens is you're growing up, someone rejects you, you get heartbroken, your first relationship, they betray you, they break your heart, or your first crush didn't like you, your classmates didn't approve of you, and you develop this fear which came from pain, right? So I want you to understand what pain really is because you might be experiencing a lot of it and in order to really attract your true love, I mean real true love, like, like love that's passionate, you wake up every day, you're excited. When you're in the right relationship, your income should go up. Your health should improve. You should feel like the relationship is growing and you should feel alive inside. Sometimes we get addicted to somebody at the beginning and we get hooked, but then we notice our income goes down, we get fatter, we're unhappy, our friends just disappear, and that's because you don't love yourself. You don't love yourself. And you can't love yourself if you're coming from a place of pain. I want you to understand, in order to lift yourself up, you have to identify what pain is. Pain is the absence of love. I'm going to repeat that. Pain is the absence of love. Whenever we lose someone we love, whenever we get heartbroken, whenever someone dies, we don't get their love anymore. That is what pain is and it creates this gap, right? So if there's this much love, let's say, and now you're in a relationship and you feel this much love because of the amount of love they give you and they're gone, all of a sudden there's this gap from where you have this amount of self-love and then you got this much love. Now there's a gap. That gap is pain. So there is no growth without suffering and that's the catch in life is the suffering you feel here is information, it's data. It says, hey, you're feeling pain because you're transitioning from something, you've lost something. Now it's time to learn how to love more and more importantly, focus on the future. If you loved yourself enough and you believed that you could attract your soulmate, you wouldn't focus on the past and what you lost, instead you'd look into the future and you'd be like, oh my God, this wasn't right, which is why I'm going to attract the right person. Now you might be telling yourself a story, you know, I lost the love of my life, it's the one that got away. Nonsense. Really, you have to learn how to be present. When you truly tap into love, it's when you're the most present. Think about the most incredible experiences you've ever had with another individual. When you've really shared a connection, you weren't thinking about the future, you didn't think about what's going to happen, you didn't think about the past, you were just in the moment. And it's a lot easier to be present at the beginning of a relationship because we're not focused on what's going to happen yet. We haven't gotten them yet. So we're focused on how we're going to create this attraction, how we're going to get them to like us. And then once they're with us, we focus on the fact that we might lose them. Now you have to let go of that fear. Right? Most people live in fear, which is why they can't create the outcomes they desire you have to focus on the fact, almost blindly, that you will have love, that there is no fear. Now, ask yourself, maybe I've been heartbroken before, maybe I've gone through the most horrendous experiences, painful experiences, sad experiences, and you haven't been able to move on. Every time you meet someone, you are constantly getting heartbroken. And I've been heartbroken several times. It can be the worst pain you have ever felt. I had a girl that I was madly in love with. I remember I fell in love with her the second I saw her. I'm in, I'm in high school, I'm sneezing, there's allergies, it's my senior year, I'm walking to class and I sneeze and someone goes, bless you. And I look over and I make eye contact with her and I look back and it was half a second. It was like this and then I looked away and I stopped, right? So I'm, I'm walking to class, I look like, thank you, like this. I said, thank you. I look back and I look again and it was just her back and I was in love with her. I just said, that's going to be my girlfriend. And I ended up dating her and it was the most incredible experience I ever had. I was so connected to this girl and you know, I could feel it. Like I was so bonded to her. You know, it was, it was one of the most incredible things I've ever had. And 
the reason it ended is because she was a foreign exchange student. She had to leave, right? Her visa is ending. Like she has to go back home. We're young, we're kids. It's not like I had any money. I couldn't fly her out whenever I wanted. It was, it was different. It was, it, if anything, the reason the relationship was so beautiful is because it's going to end. And if you think your relationship won't end, you're wrong. Everything ends. Every relationship you have will eventually end. So you have to make the most out of the time you have, right? You have to value the time you have with someone. That's how you get really present. And the most painful experience of my life, and I've had a lot of pain in my life, but yet it's my favorite memory because of the significance it has had on me. It has shown me how to really love unconditionally is this. We're at the airport. It's the last time I'm ever going to see her. I know this for a fact. I'm more in love with her than I've ever been. I'm looking her in the eyes. I'm telling her how much I love her. I don't want her to leave. And I give her one last hug. We're at the airport. And pretty much I'm looking and the TSA line is getting really, really long. Like it's getting super, super long. And I saw the time and I know that she's going to miss her flight if she doesn't go now. So I said, okay, you know, you have to go. And she's crying. She's like, please, I don't want to go. I love you. And I'm trying to hold back my tears. I'm like, I, we, you have to go. Like, I, you know, you're going to miss your flight. So, you know, I get her to stand up and there's two elevators, uh, escalator, sorry, inside of this terminal, one here and one here. We're close to this one because we thought she had to leave on this one. So we walk up to the terminal, we go to the TSA agent and we give them the boarding pass. They're like, no, it's the other one. But right before she handed the boarding pass, my heart just sank because I did not realize, I knew it would hurt. I didn't realize how much it would hurt, right? You don't know what you have until it's gone. Well, you know, I knew what I had, and I still didn't know how bad it would hurt because I had no reference. I've never experienced pain like that. So now we're walking to the other side. It's maybe half a football field length away. And I'm looking at her hand. I'm memorizing her face. I'm cherishing th these last 60 seconds felt like a century. And we get there and I give her one last kiss. And it was the sweetest hug and the sweetest kiss. And I said bye to her and our hands just went like this. And she goes up the escalator and I blew her a kiss. And uh, she went like this and I, and I go outside and I just started crying and I was crying and I was crying so much people around me were crying and it, it took me probably two and a half years to get over this girl. It was, it was the biggest heartbreak I'd ever had up until that point. And after that, I was scared. I was scared to love someone again that much because that was so fucking hard. It was so hard. But when I got over her, was the moment I realized how to truly love myself to the core. Like, like, I mean, how do you love yourself at the level where no matter what, no matter what happens in your life, you don't give up, you don't stop. And, and this is what has allowed me to be in abundance, right? And regardless who I'm with, if they're not respectful to me, if they don't treat me well, if I'm not happy, I will get up and I will walk away, not out of fear, but out of the 100% faith and belief that I will find someone that fits me, that I love, that'll be my soulmate. If you can, really tap into that abundance where you know that you'll walk away from anything that doesn't work, you will attract true love. So how do you fix a relationship you're in now? How do you attract that? How do you create a bond with someone that is so long lasting? Well, there's a formula and I'm going to give it to you here. It's trust, right? You have to trust them. And the only way to trust anyone is to be present. We're not fortune tellers, but we are manifestors. We manifest our reality. If you believe someone is going to cheat on you, if you believe someone's going to hurt you, if you believe someone's going to do something bad to you, you're going to become toxic in that relationship. You're going to be insecure, unhappy, miserable, and you're going to create that in the relationship and they're going to hurt you. So you have to make sure that no matter what, you don't let your past affect your present relationship. So many people let their past affect their present relationship and this is what fucks them over. They go into their head and they're like, oh, this is happening and that's happening. And now they're held back. They're held back because they can't truly give themselves. The only way to actually create true love in a bond that is so special is to unconditionally love someone. Now, think about someone you're with today. If you're in a relationship or imagine you're in a relationship, you're with them. And, you know, even if it's not going your way, imagine this was your last day with them. They're going to die or something. It's, it's, it's your last day with them, period. What would happen? you would love them unconditionally. There would be unconditional love because there's nothing to lose. And that's what you have to realize. Time is so short. Time is so fucking short. Life is so short. 
do you want to live life not being with someone that makes you fulfilled? Not being with a soulmate, not, not having that light, that spark inside of you, that, that flame that just burns, right? That yearns for, for more. Truly, I believe that you want to be 100% fulfilled in life, whether it's someone else, a relationship with, with someone else, a relationship with yourself, you have to tap into that love, that self-love. That will help you grow. You gotta have love for your passion, for your work. You gotta have a purpose. And really, if you wanna have ultimate happiness, the formula is love. So look at your relationship right now. Here's the formula. Trust. Trust that everything will be okay. Even if it won't be, it's okay if you get hurt. It's okay to be hurt. I would rather have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Period. That experience I had was so incredible. It gave me a taste of what life is about, that feeling of love. I had nothing, no money, no nothing. Nothing. But I had the love. That was what created an incredible experience for me. Now, I want to share that experience with you. I want you to have what love feels like. I want you to have what passion is like. I want you to get over the heartbreak and the toxic relationship you feel stuck in if you're in one. How do you go to the next level? If someone's mistreating you, if you are not happy, you don't need to stay there. If you truly loved yourself, ask yourself this question. If I truly love myself, would I let myself be here? Would I treat myself this way? If the answer is no, then leave. If you believe that it could be better, well, what are you doing that's making it not so good? Right? You, might have been, you might be with a perfect partner. Really, you might be with a perfect partner. They're incredible, but you're doing something that's holding you back. You're doing something that's stopping you from actually being fulfilled, right? You're, you're being toxic. You're letting things in the past affect you. What can we do internally to have a better pattern of behavior, right? I'll give you an example. If you're really insecure, you're going to bring that into the relationship. Insecurity is fear. You either have fear or love. There's no both. Fear means you don't trust. You don't trust, you can't love. Instead, you act, you're trying to see, will this person like me? Will they? Will they? And you're testing. You're testing the water. Let me see if they'll like me. Let me poke here. Let me see how they react. You're trying to learn them. You're trying to get comfortable with them. It's the same thing as a person who constantly works on a course until it's perfect and then it never puts it out or wants to write their book and edits every little word until it's perfect and ends up dying without publishing the book. Love is the same. You can't go in fear. You can't be insecure. Insecure means you're worried that they're going to break your heart, they're going to shatter your experience, they're going to ruin the relationship. you got to go all in. You don't have to go all in with every person you see, but you go all in when you find someone you like. They check every box you have and they're not giving you red flags because you're coming from a place of abundance so you see it properly. You're not turning a, a piece of corn into, you know, like a, a Ferrari. You're seeing things for what they are. You're seeing them for what they are. You're not just imagining it because you're desperate. When you come from a place of love, you could see people for what they are. In your mind, you're like, I have a million options. There's people waiting in line for me. Therefore, I don't have to pick or settle. Now, when you think in this way, you'll leave the relationships you don't like, you'll attract the people you love, and you'll continue to bond. Now, in the next video, because this is part one, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually screen someone to make sure that they're not going to hurt you? How do you find someone and know that they're truly genuine? They really love you and they're not bringing some toxic behaviors. They're not going to be abusive and you don't fall into the same patterns that you always fall into. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to attract that, how to really connect and how to screen someone to make sure that you can be all in and not get hurt. How can you attract the highest status, the highest value person you could ever want? So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, comment below, subscribe, and get ready because in part two, I'm going to show you how to attract your soulmate, how to screen to make sure that you're not picking the wrong people, and again, how to level up yourself so you attract that person at the highest level. I'll see you in the next video.